welcome to this new edition of Photo TV News. There are few news that really touch every photographer, uh, every serious photographer in the world. And the one that we have for you today is the one that uh, we are going to dedicate most of this show to. There is news from Adobe and there's news about our preferred tool, Photoshop. Whenever we're talking about beta versions of new software, there's one man that uh, me, yeah. that you know. It's Torsten Kieslich. Hi, Mark. Uh, Torsten, you have had a chance to look at the um, the, the, the the preview version right. for journalists only. So yeah, it's it's not public at the moment. So uh, well, I'm one of the lucky guys who can have an eye on that. But uh, if you intend to get your hands on uh, the CS5, you need to wait one more month, I think. Okay, so you are lucky, and I hope we are lucky too with interesting new features in Photoshop. Let's uh, okay. start where everything well, yeah. starts. Okay, well, and uh, of course we start there where everything starts in Photoshop at least. It's uh, Camera Raw. Um, well, it has not only a new, s new number, it's 6.0 now, the version, but Adobe really did a lot of improvements on it, so we have a complete new raw engine in here. Of course, it's all 64 bit now. And, uh, well, one of the most interesting parts is we have a proper noise reduction now. Wow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at that picture here. And, well, it's awful, basically, to be honest. It's awful. It's not mine, but it's awful. And uh, this one's noisy as anything. You notice that if I zoom in here, and you see, even at 100%, it really scares the shit out of me. I mean, How did you do that? So many nice colorful spots in there. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it took me a few years of hand tinting, basically. <laughs> now, and uh, what you see now is we have these uh, nice details tab here, and Adobe has, of course, put in a color noise reduction. So this is where we start. We just pull that slider over, and you see the color goes yeah, off. The R RGB dots disappear. Yeah, they really, really go off. And so we have just a sort of luminance noise here. And of course, we can get rid of the luminance as well. And if you look at the, the wall, while I shift that slider, you see over here, this thing here still contains the same color and, of course, the same, well, sort of brightness and everything. So we can really, in a nice way, now control in-camera raw our noise reduction. We can put in a little bit more contrast or detail and it might not look too much now but if you look at the whole image you will find that it still looks like a proper picture. It's not, well, whatever, foggy or blurred, yeah. blurred or whatever, but most of the noise is gone without using a tool like Define or whatever you might usually use in Photoshop. So you can really get rid of most of your noise in the first step when caring and preparing for your picture. I mean, this is basically done in the raw file. Well, so you saw that uh, correcting your images as far as noise is concerned um, has become a, a feature in, in Photoshop now. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Um, there have been many tools out there who have done this for a long time. Um, is this better? or uh, I wouldn't say it's better. I mean, there, there's a lot of professionals out there. And, and you can't say a company like DxO or something is not professional looking at their profiles or their tools. Or Nick, for instance. They have one of the best uh, noise reduction tools on the market. But it's, it's really a step ahead for Adobe comparing Camera Raw 6.0 with the older versions. They really, and that's, that's I think the most important part, and you notice that in a few details of uh, Photoshop now, somebody at Adobe decided to, well, have an eye on the, on the customer and listen to them and just get on with, with some tools that were never been, well, professional. Mm -hmm. Well, they also listened to um, another correction issue, which is yeah. um, distortions in, uh, in our lenses. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that, well, really make a mess out of a picture usually. If you have a wide angle shot, like, like this one here, for instance, it's a 60 millimeter shot. And well, you usually would know now, well, it take me about, well, say, up 20 minutes up to an hour to correct all these angled to get the curves out to care not to well overcorrect it yourself 
And well, what Adobe did is they really reworked their lens correction tool. I'll show you what it looks like now. You will be amazed, I hope at least you will be. If you look at the lens correction, what it does is it makes poof. It's magic. Yeah, and, and, and the beauty of it is you don't have to pull any slider and, uh, well, at least under one condition, at least uh, well, if Adobe knows your lens. Well, that's that's uh, the, the topic of profiles yeah. that we see here in the lower yeah, that's right the trick corner. Of it. Um, there are profiles for cameras and for um, yeah. lenses, and the two together can yeah, correct that's, the that's typical... The trick. So what Adobe did is they say, okay, we take some common lenses, we look at how pictures should look taken with these lenses, we look at the cameras, and so we have a sort of, well, sort of correction blueprint. This is what they apply to your picture then. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing is, and that's, uh, that's something we can really look forward in the future, it's not only that Adobe provides these profiles, no, but you can do profiles yourself. So you can take your favorite uh, lens and, well, create a sort of correction chart for it. You can upload it to a server and share it with other people. Adobe has a community for this. And so we can expect to get tons of profiles in the next few months, hopefully we can. Okay, um, there once again it's a kind of tool that we have had on the market as standalone versions for yeah. years now. Once again, DxO has these PT uh, lens, uh, yeah. lens correction. So it looks like Adobe is running a little bit after the, the competition. They, they are, well, in my eyes, they, they are just on the, on the step to catch up. Mm -hmm. They're not, fi not there finally, but they noticed, oh, we lost some bits and pieces left and right of our path. Mm. I mean, Adobe was always great in, in the core element of picture manipulation, but they missed out these parts like raw conversion, in, in some parts like noise reduction, like uh, lens correction things. And now they, can, they really try to catch up and listen to their customers and say, oh, we want to get these things back in the product. I don't think that CS5 is at the moment at the point where it's outstanding better. But you notice it's a good product, it's working, it's reliable. Shows the direction they're yeah. heading to. Same applies for HDR, because HDR yeah. is a topic that has been a little bit uh, left behind yeah, in, definitely. in Photoshop as well. And Well, HDR, we need to go over to Bridge. Of course, this is the same style Bridge we have. It's reworked as well, but you know, it works like Bridge, and we can pick our shots here, we want to get these in HDR. And if we want to do this, we can go over here and find a menu topic that says HDR Pro. And well, compared to the older HDR mechanism in Photoshop, this really is Pro. It might not be Pro in the eyes of someone working with a third-party product specialized on HDR. It, then you might say, oh, it's just normal or good. Or, but in terms of Photoshop history, this is really a step ahead. OK, you can see here that we get a dialog box now, like, a bit like the old one, basically. So what Adobe does is still it takes your pictures. In this case, we have three different shots. And they are matched together to form an HDR print. So first thing you notice is, it looks much better than it will do in the older versions. It's much more detailed, not as, well, surrealistic or strange.